Good afternoon and welcome to Have a Chat. I'm Audrey Lynch with my beautiful co-host Judy Loge. Hello Judy, how are you? Good morning on this little bit of a nippy Monday. It is, it but is. nice, it's a nice day. Yeah, it is. We, we got through the weekend without any crazy weather, yes. unlike in the past couple of weeks mm -hmm. it was a lot of snow and then a lot of rain. It's been just all over the board, crazy, crazy. Yes. But we'll welcome this beautiful yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. We got our winter early and I'm hoping that's it, if that's even possible. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. We're coming on the end of January. We have a great show lined up for you today. You're not going to want to miss it. Some great guests as well. We're going to start off our show like we always do with a little quick uh, quote, uh, usually positive, mm -hmm. uplifting. Thought provoking. Yeah, exactly. Inspiring. And it was my turn to come up with something. Mm -hmm. And with everything that I've got on my plate right now, I, and I had noticed a few uplifting mm -hmm. words this morning. Yes. And I wanted to talk uh, and I have my quote be about ambition. Good. It's January. Yes. It's a new year. It's a it's a great time to make mm -hmm. a fresh start. If there's anything that you're looking to do in your life, no matter what your goals are, yep. small little ones are great. Big goals are great as well. Perfect. And this was my quote that I wanted to come up with. Um, I was skimming through them this morning, and Reese Witherspoon, love her, love her to death. Great, mm -hmm. great actress. She was quoted as saying, "I believe ambition is not a dirty word." Mm -hmm. It's believing in yourself and your abilities. Imagine this. What would happen if we were all brave enough to believe in our own ability? To be a little more ambitious. I think the world would change. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting quote and, and very deep um, on her part. Yes. I, yeah. uh, when I look at that and think of ambition, the first mm -hmm. thing that comes to my mind, <clears throat> Audrey, is that you can take an average person with an average education and average talents mm -hmm. and can outstrip a genius if they wish to as long as their goals are focused and clear. Exactly. Don't you think they can yep. they can outshine any person in the community that's of a genius level? It's what they want to do with that goal and their drive. Yes, exactly. That's just it. And having their ambitions and things like that be uh, a positive take mm -hmm. on their life. Um, my husband and I actually sat and watched a little documentary last night about seeing like about being negative and about being positive. Mm -hmm. And it had more to do with, if you can see yourself succeeding, like literally yeah. picture it, mm -hmm. imagine it, yeah. then that will come to be. That's right. If you're constantly thinking, I can't do that, or I'll never be good enough, or I'll never be, if you constantly saying those things to yourself. Then beat it down. That's right. Then right. that's, you You speak what will happen. But really. on the other hand, and I'll just, got, we're gonna get right to our next, our first guest, but ambition can go either way. It can be like Donald Trump, with an ambition that not everybody's happy with. It could be, no. be Hitler with determination mm -hmm. and ambition, okay? This is it true. It could be good deeds or bad deeds depending this is on true. your ambition. This is true. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, but that's a good thought provoking. Yeah, exactly. Quote, I like go out it. there and go after your dreams. Mm -hmm. We're going to start off our show right away with a great guest we want to introduce to you, uh, Mathia Schrumpelt? Schumpelt. Schumpelt. See, I put the C in it. I was <laughs> telling myself not to. How are you? I'm good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for joining us today here on the show. Thanks for having me. So yeah, happy yeah. to see her. Yeah. Now, you're a <laughs> yoga instructor I here am. in Miramichi, and you are actually the owner of Yoga Magnificat. That's mm -hmm. right. Right? Yes. And um, first of all, we want to hear a little bit about who you are, in case there's any of our viewers out there who might not know. Okay. So, um, I moved here to Miramichi in 2011, so that makes almost eight years that okay. we've been here. Um, we came because my husband got a job here as a pastor Very of nice. Douglastown Community Church. Oh, oh that's, that's right. So we've had him on the show before. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, for the Refugee Society. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he was part of that group. And uh, so our church is the same place where I teach you yoga. Mm -hmm. So Beautiful. it's a, it's a multi-purpose kind of venue where we have uh, community garden meetings and we have church services. We have community suppers and we have yoga classes. And she's a singer and a woman of many talents besides <laughs> oh her my. yoga instructing ability. Yeah, I'm a jack of all trades. But <laughs> now, is yoga voice. something that you uh, actually had that certifi certification under your belt before coming to Miramichi? No, actually oh. it was um, three or four years ago that I decided to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and it was during a time when um, I knew my mother was not going to be long in this world. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really needed something to both physically challenge me and also kind of take my focus uh, somewhere else. And so I found that yoga was really beneficial for both the physical aspect and also to help with the, the stress relief and the grief relief, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you were going to yoga classes yourself. Yoga I, was something that you were familiar with. Yes, I was familiar with it. And then I just found that personally it became a really 
useful tool for mm -hmm. dealing with stress and grief and and those kind of things. Yeah, it's um, so true. I find I've I've tried a few yoga classes and the calming of the mind and mm -hmm. focusing on the inner you. Mm -hmm. On yourself. Yeah. And I'm going to jump in and say that I'm a client of Matthias. Yay. And oh. she's a beautiful instructor. Not only um, is she very um, direct and, and ex she, what the thing about Matthias is, is you don't have to watch her to have a good uh, perception of what your body's supposed to do. You mm -hmm. can literally not even look at her and she walks you through it verbally like right. nobody I've ever had lessons from before. So. Oh, okay. That's yes. great. Because there's it's different kinds of excellent. instructors and, mm -hmm. and uh, some people love yoga class and some mm -hmm. people don't really care for it. But I keep telling people to keep trying different ones because the instructors are all different. Yes, and they're and all great, but I love yes. Matthias' class. And the way she you. runs hers and the way yeah. you find it very... Oh, she's excellent. Thank she's you. fantastic. So tell people, first of all, about yoga because not like some men might be wanting to join and they can, obviously. Yeah. But you have a mostly female-based clientele. I do, and I have a, a few couples who come with their husbands and nice. um, a few... I have a gentleman or two who come to my morning uh gentle chair classes gentle chair mm -hmm. yeah so there are various classes that you teach and you want to just kind of touch on each one of them sure um there's lots of different types of yoga so that's the thing when people say i want to do yoga and then they kind of sign up for a class and they they go so what kind of what do we do right. no. um but there's lots of different kinds there's relaxation there's power flow there's um uh, sort of a gentle in-between of everything mm -hmm. so that it's suitable for beginners so um, what I offer in the mornings are drop-in classes and mostly seniors come to those but they're not restricted by age really but it's mm -hmm. just the time slot happens to be good for retirees mm -hmm. sure that's right um, but it's a really friendly atmosphere chair yoga is on Monday Tuesdays and Thursdays and there's a stretching chair yoga and there's an energizing chair yoga which Mm -hmm. does um, more of a full body workout. So we do strength, we do flexibility, we do balance in those core, ones. We do core. Mm -hmm. And that's all seated on a chair and standing behind it with your hands behind the chair back. For support. Okay, for so support. you always have that support. Exactly. And there's no getting up and down off the floor for that one, especially if you have limitations for your knees, you have um, surgery on your hips or anything like that, or you can't put weight on your, your wrists mm -hmm. and your hands. So that way it doesn't limit people to do yoga if they're thinking, I can't get down, how am I going to get up? That's right. Yes. So it's, um, it's really a great accessible exercise for just about anyone of any age With and size. With limitations of age. Yeah. I'm in her elements class. Yeah. You might want to tell our viewers no, about that, that one. Yeah. I elements love it. Would be okay, so elements, I've, I've named my classes so that they're more miramichi friendly. That's great. So <laughs> okay. that they're actually descriptive in their name mm -hmm. rather than some of those Sanskrit names that you might yes. hear that people go, what's yin, yeah. vinyasa, yin yoga. Mm -hmm. what's going yin, yin what's hatha. Mm -hmm. And so elements is a hatha style class for people who are familiar with term, yoga terms. Um, it's a beginner's class. So um, basically I wanted people to think about building from the, the elements mm -hmm. of yoga. So the basic building blocks, okay. um, it's a beginner class so that people can come in, we work on our poses, all sorts standing, seated, lying down. Um, and we work through them slowly so that people don't get overwhelmed mm -hmm. by fast transitions or any movements that require um, anything that requires hyperflexibility, which you right. don't need to come to come to your first yoga class. Mm -hmm. No, because I've often watched the yoga instructor and I'm like, there is no way I'm going to get my foot, ankle, leg <laughs> anywhere <laughs> near to where she's got it. Well, I've <laughs> been a long way since the beginning, I think, because yeah. I was nervous at first. I, I'm, I've done yoga in the past, but I've not done it as straight out as I had been with okay. Matthias since, what, late September, maybe? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you're uncomfortable at first because you're with other people and you're trying to keep up. And you sometimes want to keep up and can't. That's right. Because I have a sciat sciatic issue, mm -hmm. which flares up, and so she's very wonderful in helping me do things that will allow me to proceed, but will not set me back. No, yeah. exactly. And the nice thing, too, about your class, the ones in the evenings, they're all eight-week sessions. So I have people signing up beforehand, before the classes mm -hmm. start, so that we are together on this journey for eight weeks. Mm. That's right. So you I get know to stay with the same crowd. Yeah, I know who's going to be in my class. I know that she's written on her form what kind of things she wants to work on. Mm -hmm. Maybe she has some issues with sciatica, like mm -hmm. Judy mentioned. Um, and so then I get a sense of what the needs are in the class. Yes. And then on the flip side, for the students, they have that time slot, Tuesdays at 7, I'm going mm -hmm. to yoga for mm -hmm. eight weeks. And it's a short period, but enough to form a habit and enough to put it down in your calendar and not say, oh, I might come to the Thursday, maybe I won't. 
if you were doing a drop in. When you make that eight week commitment, you're exactly. more likely to show you've up for class. Up front, and you I've say, paid up front, you yeah. say. Exactly. Yes, so that's right. I'm paid committed. Up front, that's yeah. something that you're going to be paying for, you're going to go. Yeah, you Instead feel of more saying, responsible. Oh, I don't to have to go. Exactly. So it puts that responsibility on the student's court just to say, I'm going to go, I'm mm -hmm. going to take this time for myself. And it makes it a little easier for people to put that in their calendars mm. and stick to it. I'm exactly. so comfortable yeah. with her now. Did you find <laughs> I, I, the few little yoga classes that I had gone to that I was going to on a regular basis and I couldn't bend over, say, and touch my toes or anything else like that, did you find that going as regular as you are now that your body actually responded quite yes, quickly? you can do it. You think, okay, at first I know, it's like, right? oh, I can't bend this far. At the end of it, your, your hands are touching I the floor know. while you're bent forward. Mm -hmm. All due to her I found um, that very, expertise. very um, inspiring. Very, you know, keep me yes. wanting to keep going because by the end of the class, my flexibility had changed that much mm -hmm. in 50 minutes mm -hmm. that I couldn't True. reach and touch my toes. I but know. by the time we were warmed up and all the stretching and learning the poses. Each time I went to class, I was able to go a little yeah, farther than exactly. I did before. So true. Yeah. And you could just go over again the benefits of yoga. So you mentioned sure. the, the component of being able to, I'm a very busy woman, as yeah. is Audrey, mm -hmm. um, as is Veronique, who couldn't join us today. But mm -hmm. we need that time for ourselves. And my husband yeah. said to me, you need something just for you. Yeah. And you should be doing it more than one hour a week. Yeah. So when I go, you can talk about it, how you work with us, and the benefits of breathing and yeah, take so it from there. So the, the great benefits of yoga, I find, um, especially for the mental health part of it, mm -hmm. um, is that a lot of times we don't give ourselves the space to breathe both mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you're, you're, if you're feeling anxious, you might actually notice, if you're in tune to your body, that you're actually shortening your breath. Mm -hmm. And then the shortness of breath compounds that mental... Um, that idea that you're, you're also really tense inside. Mm. So the two things go together. When you're stressed out, you don't breathe as well. You don't get as much oxygen as well to your sure. body. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're lying in bed and you're thinking about things that stress you out, yes. mm -hmm. of course. then you might actually notice after you've been lying in bed for 10, 15 minutes doing that, that your body's really tense. Mm. And then you wake up feeling sore and uncomfortable. And right. so those things come together. And so the great thing about yoga is that it helps you be more in tune with your body, your mind, your emotions, what's going on in the moment. And so while people are, say, lying in, in Shavasana, which is the very last pose, mm -hmm. it just looks like lying down on your back. Yes. And people, some people hate this pose because it requires people to be still. Mm -hmm. And then they think, what am I going to think about? Oh, my goodness. Right. I don't want to be still in a group of strangers. Mm -hmm. And I want to get up. I want to go. I want to get my to-do list done. And so I recognize that, and I think that every time people come to their practice, I encourage them to kind of leave their preoccupations, mm -hmm. um, not to completely forget about them, but they can leave them to the side for mm -hmm. an hour. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's actually and quite difficult yeah. to do. But she's it got is. me there, because yeah. I zone out all of these other things I have to do, and she says, just focus on the here and now, and on you and your breathing, and, yeah. and you calm down, and then she says, take deep breaths and exhale, yeah. and excellent instruction yeah. so you walk away feeling oh and it's then a, it takes breathing practice is too it does yeah take like someone exactly. comes once and they go it's not for me and it may not be that's okay yeah. but it if they don't come maybe more than three mm -hmm. four times they may not get that idea so that's your recommendation come three or four times regularly to truly say whether it's for mm -hmm. you or not mm -hmm. yeah Exactly. Right? Give it more than just one chance at least. No, that's just it. And that breathing and calming of the mind, mm. the health benefits from that alone mm -hmm. on top of the physical mm -hmm. with the, the physical part of yoga yeah. is huge. Yes. I even find with my younger two kids with the school and stuff like that and, and everything that they had on their plates with exams, mm -hmm. and exams are still going on this week because of all the storm days last week, to just breathe. Mm -hmm. To breathe. Just she was heading off doing yeah. her first... Uh, exams ever in grade nine and a and I'm just like at this point you've studied you you just yeah. have to feel confident enough and just breathe and take a minute to just calm your mind because yeah. and I think with the the whole everybody is so preoccupied with their devices and social mm -hmm. media like our minds are not actually in our heads you know what I mean they're elsewhere, they're elsewhere. That's a good and point. so for example like you might be sitting through lunchtime working on something on your computer it may not even recognize that you're hungry mm -hmm. anymore. No. Like we start to ignore our bodily cues. Mm -hmm. We start to ignore the fact that we're getting really stressed out in the eyes and just really tired yeah. and foggy. Yeah. 
but we don't pay attention, and so we run this gamut of com com uh, completing these cycles over and over, mm -hmm. and that becomes kind of our default. Right. And we forget that the brain needs to have that bit of space and breathing, True. and we yeah. kind of fizzle out. But on the so. other side of it, that the body itself, I have so much more strength now in my body as far so as So that's what I was going to ask you. What benefits are you yes. feeling? Because September, that's, you've yes. got a few good I months in there. I feel more toned and I feel more strong and I find my posture is more aligned because we're definitely mm. dealing with a lot of spinal you know, movement. Well, when you're like um, this, hunched mm -hmm. over with yes. your, like she said, with the devices. And just even like Mathia herself is so muscular and she said it's not just about <laughs> a six pack, which I don't have, but she probably has. It's, it's more, you said, about your muscle and your strength and your core because your core, as you can right. elaborate, is what keeps us going, yeah. like strong and I'm, walking. Exactly. I mean, I, it's nice to have the washboard stomach thing, but it's not the focus of the yoga classes. No. It's to no. build the internal muscles that line the spine right. so you have a healthy spine and everything mm -hmm. that, that surrounds your spine, your digestive organs, your heart, your lungs, it's all around that area. So yeah. you have to keep that strong, a strong framework in order to have a healthy body. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. maybe people would love to know where to join your class and when they can yep. enroll and more information from you. Sure. So I have classes over at Douglas Town Community Church. It's at 302 Big Ferry Road. 302 mm -hmm. Big um, Ferry Road. Yeah, and so you can look it up on my website. Okay, you have a yeah. website, you have a Facebook page. I do. Okay. You just have to look up Yoga Magnificat. Yeah. Yoga Magnificat on Facebook, uh -huh. and can you book through that, or you can just get the information and find out where the, where the classes are? You can book them where? online. Oh, you um, can? Yep, you Perfect. can sign up, and then I email, and we exchange. You can do e-transfers, you do cash, you Perfect. do checks, that, yes. all that stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for being on the show today and letting yeah. us know <laughs> all about your yoga class. It's great. fantastic, And we wish I you great say. success Thanks with so all much. of that, and hopefully we'll have you back again to update us on anything new and, and exciting happening with sure. your business. Thank you so much. Can't wait to okay. go tomorrow night. Yeah. Yes. We have sure. more Have a Chat after the break. Don't go away. We've got a great show lined up. We're going to be talking about the Special Olympics coming in February. Don't go away. We'll be back with more. And we're back with more Have a Chat. Joining us now, we have a couple of new guests. We have Adam Hayward and we have Josh Astle. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Hello. Glad you could be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So we're here to talk about something very special, the Special Olympics that are coming up um, here in February. And uh, first, we want to tell uh, uh, the audience a little bit about yourselves first and who you are. Awesome. So yeah, I'm Josh. I'm the executive director of Special Olympics, and we're based out of Fredericton. Okay. Uh, I live there now with uh, a wife and three small children, but I am Ooh, a busy, very busy. proud Upper Miramichier. Okay. So it's, it's nice for me to see our games come to the city here later in February. Truly is. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. It's really exciting. And Adam? Uh, Adam Hayward. I'm a technology lead with Anglophone North School District, mm -hmm. and I've been volunteering with Special Olympics off and on for about 15 years now. Mm. Nice. And I'm sitting in for Ann McDonnell, who couldn't make it today, but she's been yes. leading a class uh, who's really been spearheading the organization of the games, which yeah. has mm -hmm. been fantastic. Yeah, she's, she's a great lead there, for yeah. sure, definitely. So where did this all begin? Okay, there has to be a starting point for the Special Olympics to be brought to Miramichi for the first time, I think, the Winter Olympics ever, and maybe way back, the Summer Games in the 90s, correct? Yeah, correct. So where did you, where does this all begin? So it all starts, uh, we have a, an organization within ours called the Provincial Program Council and it's kind of our key volunteers from around the province and, and they kind of tell us what the needs are for the organization as, as far as staff goes of where we can send our games to. Mm -hmm. um, our games are a smaller set of games than the summer games so we like to take them to out of the Tri-City hubs um, and into more areas uh, strategically, uh, like the Miramichi and Good. the last winter games were in Woodstock. So right. we like to go to the smaller okay. geographical yes. areas. Right. 
Um, we also like to identify some areas that potentially would need some help after the games with new volunteers, new funding, okay, uh, yeah. to bring in more athletes. So it's to stir up awareness. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, the big thing is that we're not just the big events. These things, our athletes are competing in sports locally here different days of the week. Mm -hmm. Year-round. Uh, they do bowling yes. year-round and, yeah. and swimming and floor hockey. So, you know, Wonderful. there's always lots of activities going on in the community. Mm -hmm. It's not every two years or four years that we have these big events. There's stuff happening all the time. All the time. Yeah. So exactly. it's a big part of our awareness. So uh, we met with our provincial program council, and I put the bug in our regional coordinator's ear, who is Gail Way. Um, yes, from I know here Gail. And she soon uh, recruited Chief Paul Fyander to oh, be the okay. to be right. the chair and and after an initial meeting with them they were all for it and it's it's been a phenomenal experience since. Now, did we have to pumped. apply? Yeah, did we did Miramichi have to apply? Was there other cities that were looking to ha to host? Um, not necessarily no. apply, but you have to like we had to get a, a support from the city. So the mayor mm -hmm. had to write a letter to say mm -hmm. we support okay. this happening. Um, you know, we don't have people knocking our door down to host these games because it okay. is a big undertaking it, and it it's is. volunteers yeah. put in a tremendous amount of time and effort as it is. Yeah. Right. Um, so luckily we were able to reach out outside of the local committee and bring mm -hmm. in some more expertise um, so that it wasn't, you know, the, co the same coach that's doing floor hockey isn't organizing exactly. games. Exactly. It is happening, exactly. but they're not as hands-on as right. they have to be. Adam, your role in this, for, like you, you wear many hats because you're, you're involved in so many great things in our community. But as far as this in conjunction with the Special Olympics and your job, maybe you could just give the viewers some feedback. Yeah, so as far as Special Olympics goes, I, I coach floor hockey. So my father, uh, Chief Byander, and uh, Blake Lynch and I coach the Miramichi Special Olympics team. And uh, the involvement as far as Anglophone North School District goes really is, once again, with Ann McDonnell's class at Miramichi mm -hmm. Valley High School. A group of grade 11 and 12 students and heard that we were hosting the games and uh, she said I'd like to try to figure out some way that I can bring this into the school curriculum Wonderful. and really have our students spearheaded. Mm. So they've taken on things like writing grants, they've gotten thousands of dollars in grants, uh, thousands of dollars in endorsements from uh, local businesses. Um, they've, really been, they've been taking over the whole social media aspect of promoting the games, developing posters for the wow. games. Yes, Just exactly. a ton of work that, once again, like Josh said, volunteers would normally be doing that the students just kind of take on and say, we got this, and they go and they do it. So it's, it's a leadership class with these students, and we'll talk more. We're going to bring another student yeah. on, actually, for yeah, the last the segment, segment of the yeah. show. Yeah. But um, it's, it's that fantastic that. that you guys are able to work together and to coach, and yeah. also with the volunteers and keeping everything mm -hmm. Tell us about that. That's a huge thing, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to have the help of Patty Quinn and Ann Woods. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. very good volunteer organizers from other events that happen here in the city. Uh, so they've kind of spearheaded the, uh, the volunteer. And we've actually had such an uh, impact from volunteers that we actually had to stop accepting volunteers mm. for the event. So Ooh. it's a good... Oh, yeah, it's I'm a sure very with that. <laughs> that yeah, doesn't surprise us, though, with Miramichi. Miramichi is yeah. always been known for great volunteers. It's a good problem that they have, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, volunteers. Within yeah. a week of putting it out on Facebook or asking for volunteers, within a week, we were saying, okay, we have enough. I'm okay. not surprised, Come though, with Miramichi. Athletes, They're huh? so yeah. out there no. willing to help. Yeah. So tell us about the event itself. Now, it's going to run from February 21st to the 24th. Mm -hmm. And the schedule of events is listed somewhere mm -hmm. of where everything's happening yeah. and where we can go see. Yeah, so all of our schedules are listed on the games website, which is sombgames.ca. Sombgames.ca. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a pretty packed schedule. Uh, okay. It runs the Thursday evening is the opening ceremonies mm -hmm. at uh, the James M Hill Auditorium. Is that oh, where? Okay, nice. James and, M Hill is uh, going to be the opening ceremony. And then okay. the next morning we start right away with our competitions in floor hockey, bowling, um, snowshoeing, and curling. Okay, four events. Okay. Yeah, and then so there's two days of competitions, um, and a, and on the Saturday evening is the all important dance. The dance. Um, oh, there's they a love dance. that. Yeah, yes, so the highlight. Our athletes are very competitive. They love to win, they but uh, the dance has to be at games. It's the social. <laughs> it's the social side of games, and it's the, really the part that all the athletes remember and talk yeah, about. Exactly. And, and and where's that finale? being held? Yeah. Uh, the dance is being held at the Lions Club. It okay. is a closed-off event just for okay. our participants. Right. Um, but it's being held at the Newcastle Lions Club here, um, and they've also the Lions Club also shout out to them. They've chipped in to provide all of the food and catering for the whole weekend. Oh, amazing. Wow. Um, all of our meals are going to be housed out of there. Wonderful. It's, That's so exciting. The, the amount of support we've gotten from the city has been phenomenal. You just can't begin to 
to talk about how supportive everybody has been. And we have lots of athletes. Yeah, lots so we have uh, 400 participants. Wow. So that wow. breaks down to 300 athletes supported by 100 coaches. Huh. Okay. Um, they're from all around New Brunswick, seven different regions in New Brunswick, and PEI is bringing a, a team of 85. Oh, my so goodness. So there's teams coming. It's not <laughs> just Miramichi at all. It's all of It's all, all of New the, Brunswick. All yeah. of New and Brunswick. PEI comes over. The, of course, a bridge connects us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they have uh, they have a great program in, on the island and they usually do come to our provincial games. It, mm -hmm. it helps us because it gives us more athletes to compete against our athletes. That's right. And yes. We we're so close that we all have friends there. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's it's nice every couple of years for the two provinces to get together, and reconnect the Beautiful. athletes and all that fun stuff. So, Adam, you're feeling like since the beginning and this all started uh, way back when the planning process, are you feeling good about this whole thing tightening up now and where it should be at at this point? We're so close. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, we're, uh, we're ahead where I would you're have expected. Ready. You would think we'd be nervous and yes. getting crunch time and getting, Loose ends. there's a lot of things to do. But once again, with Anne's class, everything seems to be taken care of. We have a great committee of, gosh, there must be 25 people sitting around the table. We have a meeting tonight mm -hmm. and it just seems like the connections, Everyone's, everything's yeah. together. And there, there really isn't that, you know, it's excitement, not mm -hmm. nervousness. Yeah. So do you personally have a love for the special needs people that as far as like I do, because I try to, I have a couple of people in my life I try to mm -hmm. take out to events and movies and things like that. And I find they make me humble. These mm -hmm. people with special needs are the most forthright, outright, honest and loving people that you mm -hmm. could meet and that's why I love to be around them. They teach yeah. us something about being yeah. humble. No, Do you exactly. not find? No, well, I mean, they my... They say it as yeah. it is. Their, their hearts are right out there. They're not, there's no, um, what can I say? There's nothing shallow about them at all. They're just, they, they are No, they they're just like love. a matter, of, it's, it's a matter of fact. And this is, this exactly. is who I am yeah. and, you know, like me or don't like me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. they, they don't no have that. No pretentiousness or nothing no. like that. No. I can name a few people that have really, really just brought me to a level where I'm thinking, you're so impressive and I'm so inspired by you. No, exactly. They're That's honest just and it. caring mm -hmm. and I love being around them. That's what I find with like, we, I coach floor hockey on Saturday nights. It's always at six o'clock and there's other things that come up on my Saturday nights that I'd like to do, but it doesn't matter how bad of a day I might be having if I go to floor hockey. It, it you can't have a bad up. day anymore. Exactly, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anybody, have, oh, sorry. No, you Anybody that has... Uh, has a history with Special Olympics. We have a ton of stories that come to mind as yeah. soon as somebody <laughs> starts talking about. Some of them we can't tell on TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, a lot of them for another show. <laughs> but, um, but you know, you talk about uh, being humbled by our athletes. I and, am. And you know, I've been around Special Olympics in New Brunswick now for nine years. And starting out, you know, I was just had my girlfriend. We didn't have family and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. And now with three kids, you know, our athletes teach us how to be kinder, better people. I see. Exactly. Not only inside of work, but also you take life lessons on to your personal life as well. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, you know, and I grew up in a, in a competitive sports world. Oh. I played mm -hmm. every sport. Oh, did you? Going okay. A small, yeah. small school. You, so you, you know what it's everything. like and what it means to be a part of a team. Exactly. And, right. But we often neglect to think about how Special Olympics sports can teach other sports how to act. Oh, that's for sure. That's a good yeah. point. With sports, you know, our athletes are competitive as heck, and they yeah. want to win just as bad as just anything. Just as bad. But if they become second place to a friend they just met five minutes ago on the starting line, mm -hmm. they're hugging at the finish I know, line. I that's and, what I'm you know, saying. So that's, that was my point about them just being so real. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're, they're exactly. so true to themselves. No, it's it's that's an eye-opener, it. really. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to say, like, for my son Brody, who's part of this team this year, and and on the floor hockey team to see him because um, for the most part when he's uh, you know getting ready for work or around the house and all of a sudden you see him up and he's getting ready and I'm like where are you going hockey we're going you know, and he's so excited he, yeah he can't get out yeah. the door fast enough I've got practice he's like I gotta go well it's exciting it is them. it really is and then uh, we're gonna talk um, with uh, Kale who's gonna be joining us in the last yes. segment with uh, the different projects and stuff that that and McNanell's class actually came up with to help promote this and uh, fundraiser generate the money and things like that because mm -hmm. is that something that you had to do on top of because you said you got a lot of donations and things yeah. like that was there other things that you had to do to help raise the funds to do this um, you know we like to keep our registration fees for our teams at a minimum um, and the reason behind that is a lot of our athletes live on assisted living okay. mm, and their incomes okay. are, are low so we don't want yeah. to burden our athletes and That's financial right. burdens mm -hmm. to participation is big in a lot of sports so yes. we try to mm -hmm. take that out 
So fundraising is a big part of what we do. Okay. We're very fortunate that our name stand alone, everybody associates it as a good cause. Yes. True. But the yeah. thing that we have to do is go in and educate of what exactly Special Olympics is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we tend to do that with our athletes. So okay. our athletes are our best spokesperson, are our best salesmen. Yeah. So we get our athletes in front of potential sponsors or funders and you know we don't have to say anything. They take the show and, and it's usually a, a pretty uh, you know quick turnaround on, on a yes from an ask. The, uh, the Rotary Club of Caddam came on board yes. as our title sponsors. <laughs> uh, I belong, a, I'm proud. <laughs> yeah, with a, with a significant amount. Um, you'll see their logo along with our Yams logo everywhere mm -hmm. it goes. And, and it's community organizations like that that we target because they have, they have an, an aspiration to give back to their community and we're trying to give back to our community mm -hmm. as well as in well. a different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the funding and stuff like that is good. The students coming on board has taken a lot of burden off of our staff. We have a small staff who try to do a lot of different things and, right. and also volunteer. So the students doing their projects, we were actually able to give them a list of things that we normally do out of the office mm -hmm. and they've hit a home run with, with what they're doing. Okay. So. No, it is. Yeah. It is. And it's, it's inspiring for us to see these students um, actually in the communities and coming out to the, to the competitions or the mm -hmm. local practices and, and showing leadership. Yes. Um, and I know Kale will probably talk about how it's changed the relationships within the school system with the mm -hmm. students from the from the resources classes and with the students. From it the definitely classes, would so. for sure. No, yeah. exactly. That's just it. Now, where is it that some of the games are being held? Now, the curling's obviously going to be at the curling rink, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And yeah. the floor hockey's going to be at a new at, part of that, right? Floor hockey's at Miramichi Valley, so all okay. the floor hockey events will be at Miramichi Valley. The uh, snowshoeing as well mm -hmm. is at Miramichi Valley. Oh, they is that hosted okay? there. And then the bowling is at uh, Castle Bowling Alley behind yes. uh, Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to physically give them awards, get those all done up. Is there a, like a medal or what are you going to do, little trophies or what yeah. is the plan there? So just like the Olympics you see on TV, we mm -hmm. award first through third um, yeah. medals. And we do things a little bit differently. We uh, classify by ability level in our classifications. Oh. So okay. everybody has an equal shot at being successful. You right. Know? right. So it's, it's all based Fair. on ability mm -hmm. and time mm -hmm. and age mm -hmm. and gender. So you know we split it up so that everybody has that opportunity well, but sure. also it's oh, a com yeah. it's a competition not yes. everybody goes home with, with something that's right you know you yeah. have to earn your your reward mm -hmm. but everybody does go home with new memories and all that stuff so you know. adam what's uh, some of that like what are some of the more difficult tasks in coaching is they have a good camaraderie oh. but then do they have a lot of feisty moments where you have to step in yeah as a, uh, <laughs> like so sa sunday we played uh acadian peninsula in okay. a warm-up game yeah. yes and I think by the end of the game, Ivan King had cut about four of our athletes. I love you. <laughs> I, Ivan King, yeah. we're done. He figured out why we lost, and yeah. afterwards, yeah, Ivan figured out that we should cut these four people, and uh, you know, so that's quite entertaining. It but, is, um, and that's why I said you yeah. enjoy being around these special needs people so much because mm -hmm. they are just so loving and yeah. inspiring mm -hmm. and funny, like yeah. very, like you said, it just makes yeah. you smile all the time yeah. being in their presence. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun, um, you know. The, the biggest challenge as a coach, I guess, is just organization because they all want to get out on the court and they all want to be there. And it's, <laughs> it's a big job. Know, be like yeah. herding kittens. Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, sure. It's a big undertaking. Yeah. You coach alone or do you have an assistant coach for Yeah, no. So my father, Rick Hayward, oh, coaches yes, with me, right. uh, Chief Fiander coaches, okay. and Blake Lynch. Right, as well. he did, he did so. say oh, that. Yeah, 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 four of so, you. You and, need and that many. Yeah, we need at least four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then we have Ivan King coaching. So to get him. Stop, yes. stop yelling at the refs is quite a difficult task sometimes. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, did you run into any challenges yourself? Now, being you're out of Fredericton, you mm -hmm. said, for yeah. doing the Special Olympics, yeah. uh, organizing this and getting all ready? No, you know, the committee has been fantastic. Chief Finer and I talk multiple times a day, both oh, by okay. phone Great and by man. email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a ton of respect for, for that gentleman and yes, the amount of too. effort and time. He's a, obviously a very busy man in mm. his, in his mm -hmm. own work life and putting this as a priority in his life is oh. really showing us a lot about who he is. Um, but you know, there's times when games get stressful and we mm -hmm. haven't reached that point yet. Okay. And with the things that are lined up and how well it's lined up, mm -hmm. um, I don't see any stress You're not foreseeing with these anything. ones. Um, yeah. you know, in any event, something's going to happen. Exactly. It's inevitable. Yeah. But no we have storms. <laughs> no, that's the only oh stressful my, part. Yes, the weather has yeah. to cooperate. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hopefully, the we weather will as well. well for yeah. some events, you need that for snow. We need snow for snow shoeing, though. No, that's exactly. That's just it. Well, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to bring on Kale Power to join our conversation with everything that he's doing with his grade 12 class at MBHS. And we'll be back to talk about more. We'll be back with more Have a Chat after the break, so don't go away. Thank you.
Welcome back to More Habitat. Joining us now is our next guest, MDHS grade 12 student, Kale Power. Hello, Kale. Hi. How are um, you? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks for <clears throat> joining us today and talking about this great special event that's coming up here that we're hosting here in Miramichi. Yeah. Um, we're going to get our viewers to find out a little bit about you first, though. Tell yeah. us about yourself. So I, uh, I'm 17 years old and I'm a grade 12 student. Um, and I'm the middle child of three. I grew up in Miramichi and now I'm part of uh, the class of grade 11 and 12 students um, that Anne McDonnell, like you guys talked about, mm -hmm. um, organized. And uh, So you're one of the members of this class that yeah. she wanted to take on um, helping with this project as being part of your curriculum in class. Yeah, so there's about 17 of us. Mm -hmm. we, we gave an applications last year um, and at that time I wasn't really sure you know what exactly it would entail. Mm -hmm. um, I was certainly looking forward to working with different people in the community mm -hmm. and the athletes as well. Because um, you had heard of Special Olympics, oh, yeah. that we all knew. Oh yeah. yeah? Um, but certainly I didn't know just like how rewarding and how um, just how amazing you feel um, like you know in interacting with everyone mm -hmm. and being a part of it and just our, our class I almost think of us more as a team um, we all work together, so there's no real projects that ju there's just one person solely working no, on. No, you're, you're family almost. Yeah, it yeah. really is, and you know, like we have we have chats on different social medias together, so there's mm -hmm. never a moment that you know one person experiences that's not shared with the rest of the class. So in that way, it's really nice. To both of you, Kale and uh, teacher Adam Hayward, uh, there is a title for this leadership class, isn't there? Yeah, it's Growth, Goals, and Grit. Growth, Growth Goals, and Grit. I like it. So do I. Did I you like come it. up with that, Kale Power? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I, I, wish yeah. I could say I did. But that's no. an actual curriculum that's offered throughout New Brunswick. Oh, is it? But what oh, Anne did is kind okay. of took the curriculum and, and massaged it towards this project. So mm -hmm. each exactly. student kind of came up with a goal based on the Special Olympics and a project right. that they could come on, I love it. come aboard so with. So how did Anne introduce this to the class and what, sh what it exactly she wanted you guys to do? Or did you guys start coming up with the actual project ideas? So she's, she definitely had like an, an overview of different things that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it, I mean, these two came in and they, they bounced off some different ideas mm -hmm. with us, mm -hmm. right. um, which we further like elaborated on. Mm -hmm. And um, as for the students themselves, I know I have always had like an interest in photography right. and just editing and stuff like that. So that's definitely one of my fortes, I guess. Yes. Um, so she never really assigned to students, you know, you're going to do this mm -hmm. or this. Um, of course, she hinted, you know, when some people were, you know, a but little. But she went with your interests. And, and, yeah, and, and certainly. And um, she wanted everyone in the class to take initiative. Okay. Um, so I did take initiative and I created posters. Can we see these? Yes. Oh, yes. Well, well, this was one of the projects man. that you guys spearheaded yeah. to yeah. for the athletes of the Special Olympics. Amazing. Amazing. I looked online. I just was browsing through Special Olympics material and I thought, who did that beautiful poster? <laughs> and it is, I'll have to say, my nephew, <laughs> Kale Power, because you forgot to tell them. <laughs> yes. And this is my son Brody, actually, that yeah. is in this first Fine photograph. Fine looking man there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his, with his floor hockey. Oh, he's Gear all set up. Yeah. on and everything else like that. Very proud mama here. <laughs> uh, what position Definitely. does he play? Does he, um, have it, does he change it up or do they he's use it? He's a forward. He's, he's a, a forward. He's a yeah, he's, forward. I, if I had to guess, because yeah. I didn't know, I would have to say he's he'd have TV. to be 
front and center. Yeah. <laughs> you would have a hard time keeping him in the in yeah. the defense for and sure. This young man is participating also. Um, Jeremy is Tozer. He in the net? Uh, no, Jeremy's uh, Jer Jeremy's actually the captain of the team. Jeremy and, Tozer. Yeah. yeah. Another handsome fellow. Yeah. He's uh, the captain. Yeah. And one of the neat things that's happened because of Anne's class is uh, this is really. Uh, kind of naturally, organically grown throughout the community. So mm -hmm. Jeremy tomorrow is actually going into Dr. Lojay Middle School mm -hmm. and teaching students there about Special Olympics floor hockey and organizing a practice That's for the right. students, yeah. which is Now cool. these, yeah, these were done up um, for promotional to advertise. Yeah, so we actually, um, we have different ties, I guess, like around town. Um, and one of the people that we work with is Jordan Pinder. He's Dolly just a local yeah. photographer. Yeah, he's the local he's photographer. Really talented. Yes, um, he is. And I thought that I would just be more helping out with him um, mm -hmm. in, in creating these. But he came and he brought his lights and uh, a green screen backdrop. Um, we purchased a camera for the class oh, that we nice. could use to take them. Um, and he pretty much just said, you know, here you go. He touched here's some, Yeah, he wow. said, here are some pointers. And he really helped. And this um, is uh, beautiful Zakia. I mm -hmm. she's been on our show before. She's, yes. uh, what can I say, a ray of sunshine. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's a constant, yeah. uh, smiling, young, amiable mm -hmm. woman. And so she is doing what now? Is she participating? Bowling. bowling. So Zakia is going to be in the bowling competition. I bet she's fierce, is she? She is. <laughs> go, her and her best friend, go. Michelle. Yeah. What? No, her exactly. and her best friend, Michelle. Yes, yeah. very, very close friends. Yeah. No, that's just it. So walk us through. What did you just do? Yes. How did you bring this all together? So for that there, um, we basically got in contact with the different like people that were in charge, whether it was more services, which is um, an organization or yeah. Yeah, an organization that um, helps know. people with uh, intellectual disabilities yes. find mm -hmm. employment through the community. There yeah. way back when. Yeah. Well, I really yeah, enjoyed my job. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, and so we just pretty much got in contact with everyone and we arranged different times for them to all meet. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just really, it was nice having them all come in. And they'd all, you know, brush their hair and get it all done up for the, mm -hmm. the, po the pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had this green screen backdrop. It was just in one of the classrooms at the school. And I just, I kind of directed them. I said, you know, turn this way a little right. bit and take pictures of each of them. Uh, and then you sort through them, of course. Mm -hmm. The best um, ones yeah. to go with. No, I'd yeah. have to say because, like, uh, um, for those who don't know my son, but I would imagine maybe other athletes as well, Brody, the way he stands and can hold his head actually makes it quite hard to take his oh. picture mm -hmm. because he has a hard time holding his head straight on. Okay. And I was there that day when these photos were taken. So, and to make That's sure, nice. I mean, that picture is absolutely stunning. It I is. absolutely love it. So very, very I. handsome man. And, um, and to be able to capture him without seeing any of the, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the- That is best. Yeah. No, that exactly, is best. that is best kind beautiful. of thing. And, mm -hmm. and you guys were so patient that day to be able to take, you know, more than one shot to get what you thought would be, you yeah. know, a great shot for their posters. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. I'm really like happy with how they turned out and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And he, Jordan, he also um, brought up different tools that we could use. He mm -hmm. sat down with me one day and he taught me different things about Photoshop, which I thought Photoshop was T a terrifying program um, before he came in and he showed me his tips and tricks and now I have it on my computer and I work at home on the posters. So um, you've learned a lot. Yeah. I love process, the like, outcome too. Yeah. So Adam you were saying earlier that these will be some of these young individuals work uh, as they work yeah. right. either part-time or full-time don't mm -hmm. they? Correct. Yeah. Yep. And so for example one of the young gentlemen you were mentioning Nick Connell Okay. He works in downtown Chatham's dollar store, is that correct? correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'll put it up in the store? Yeah, so the goal is we, we put these posters up throughout the community, you know, where these athletes are visible. Uh, like I know mm -hmm. Big Al Sutherland, a lot yeah. of people would know Al from the yeah. ballparks. Uh, oh, you're right. Uh, Al hangs out at Creative Grounds a lot, you know, so we'll put a poster Perfect. there. Um, McDonald's know, is where Brody's Bro at, yeah. so there's a lot of traffic through there. Yeah. It's a promotion, yeah. it's making them proud of what their, their future's going to hold in these games. It's yeah, it really shows Miramichi off as an inclusive it community. It yeah. does, certainly is. Not only that too, but they also really get excited. I know um, I was at the floor hockey game mm -hmm. against Acadian Peninsula there yesterday. Right. And so, um, was it you? You brought the, or who brought the boxes of the posters? I'm not sure. Josh. Yeah, jo yeah. Okay, it was you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay. um, he brought them along and so I was taking a peek at some of them. And they were all kind of coming over and they wanted to they see theirs. Yeah. yeah, and it was just, it was it's so nice seeing the smiles on their faces. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, when they see them on a poster. Um, well, yeah, but I, don't, I think I have one it's something to be proud of. Myself. <laughs> it is. That was what I did for drama way back when. I, I mean, I don't get posters. Do you get posters of yourself? I, you're like going to tell me you've never been on the cover of a poster. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Not even next for a mission, minute. Next mission. No, but to be so proud of to be a part of a group and, and mm -hmm. some, something that's doing so well for our community and for anyone's special needs across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is a very, very extremely important cause. Big and event. It, it makes them be part of the process in helping to raise awareness with this. Yeah, and that's only one part of the class, really. Like, uh, so like Bridie Travers has been kind of in charge of getting sponsorships. Okay. Um, she organized about three weeks ago, our athletes, mm -hmm. we played the, the class at MDHS, and mm -hmm. then uh, we all went to the Timberwolves game, and the athletes right. were the mm -hmm. guests of honor there, oh. and got free Timberwolves toques, and mm -hmm. uh, Cameron Morehouse, another student in the class, is organizing cheer squads from all of our local schools. So right. you might be from uh, Nelson Rural School, and you're partnered up with uh, the Moncton floor hockey team. Oh. So you're going to come to all their games, wear right. their colors, design posters for them. All interconnected. Yeah, That's and Cameron's really been in charge of that. I've been helping her out. But the, the awesome thing about my position is, is I'm kind of there as a help. I'm not I'm working with the students. I'm not right, really right, teaching them anything. Right, but you're which overseeing is super cool. all and, this. Yeah, and they're giving me assignments. Like right before we came on air, I got another email from Cameron saying, I need the busing code because <laughs> I you know, I have funding for <laughs> to bus all the students. And yeah. I need the busing code before I send an email to the teacher. So mm -hmm. she's probably sitting at home right now like, why isn't Mr. Hayward responding? No, uh, you've got it. That's yeah. just it. He's got a full-time job. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, Kale, now you're a grade 12 student. Yeah. Now, what has all of this done for you, you now, finishing up high school, as far as what your future plans and goals are? Has this impacted you at all in oh, what you want to do? Definitely, yeah. Um, when I first started high school, mm -hmm. I was a bit more timid. I mean, I kind of put myself out there, but I was just kind of awkward talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, so this here, along with working, I guess, um, mm -hmm. But the both of them, they've definitely improved um, my people skills a lot. And so um, going forward after high school, um, I'm going into the arts. So it's definitely, you know, um, where I want to be at because I'm not a math or sciencey person. No, nope, um, that's okay. So in working with people in the community with this event here, mm -hmm. um, you learn different things and how to, how to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Just compassionate. Yeah compassionate and just understanding mm -hmm. um, because not only you know the people with intellectual disabilities no exactly um, just everyone and dail, um, daily life yep um, you're going to Dalhousie University yeah so you fall. know you can always I know my sons always wanted to work with special needs individuals and they did mm -hmm. and they enjoyed it so much there was like my oldest son went swimming for example on Saturdays with one young man mm -hmm. and then Janice mm -hmm. I remember took another guy out for coffee and a movie mm -hmm. and they they just had really one-on-one -on -one quality time and it was a really big part of their learning yeah and I've already so. heard students from Anne's class they're looking into you know they're going to UMB and saying, does, oh. does Frederick have Special Olympics? Right. Well, of course they do. Mm -hmm. And they've already exactly. been looking into, how can I volunteer with Special Olympics? Totally. Where I'm going to school. Does Mount A, does Sackville have no. Special Olympics? You can volunteer yeah. at, on any yeah. level. Like, this mm -hmm. would open yeah. up a door. Like, it wouldn't even necessarily have to be Special exactly. Olympics. There's so many other Volunteers. different yeah. we have, venues. We have a lot of like-minded organizations that provide services right. and, and care to people with intellectual disability. And, Best Buddies is actually a sister organization of mm -hmm. Special Olympics. It was all mm -hmm. founded by the Kennedy Shriver family. Oh, uh, oh both, okay. Both were. So there, you know, there's Best Buddies in high schools and universities mm -hmm. and just communities. Like, if you're not a sports person, it doesn't mean you can't volunteer with somebody with a Special Olympics or with no. an intellectual disability and make a difference in their life. So if I was in drama, for example, and I had no sports inclination, right. I could go for something. Are there things that offer that music and drama? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, Best Buddies is a really good one because they pair you up one on one with somebody with an intellectual disability, and mm -hmm. you can just go to the movies. It's just developing friendships. Yeah, things that my boys um, did. Yeah, they yeah. really yeah. love that. They look forward to that every yep. week. Yeah, but one thing the class has been doing too is taking their their fellow peer students from the high school with that have an intellectual disability mm -hmm. and doing activities with them in the school, taking them to the pool. Mm -hmm. um, playing basketball in the gym and having nice. dance parties and basketball oh, at the same nice. time and oh. you know so it's you know really it's fun and it's yeah. it's rewarding <clears throat> it is and you you build friendships with them mm -hmm. and I know even a couple of the mothers of the students with special needs at our school um, they commented on how um, out of the shell yeah. um, their, their son and daughters have been become um, not only thanks to our class but even the ones that are involved in the games mm -hmm. um, you know they've gotten a lot more um, comfortable like talking to people 
Well, they're dry. Yeah, they, sure. come, they become a little more social. I, yeah. I can remember that being one of my worries for Brody when he was younger, whether or not he was going to have friends, whether or not they were going to of invite course. him to play along, to go and do these mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. And, and this, this event here has, like I said, got, given him a reason to get out of the house and go mm -hmm. hang out with his friends. And I know that even coming back from practice, all of a sudden there's people coming in the house and I'm like, hi, yeah. you get too many like, friends yet? <laughs> <laughs> He's coming in, I'm like, did you want to induce your friends to your mother? <laughs> like, you know, coming in the house. But it's, it's great to see them have that because without it, it, it I found it, it, those kinds of things without those, they, they become secluded, especially if yeah. social media is so easy for that to take over and then for them mm -hmm. to feel like that's their world and that's their friends. Mm -hmm. And I've always tried to teach my kids that friends are the ones that you actually see and go have a coffee of with. Them, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of interaction. It's a really good circle. And they're all like, even not only the ones on the teams, like uh, yesterday when I was watching them play, mm -hmm. um, you know, when a team gets a goal, on the opposing team, they they'll pat each other on the back. Mm -hmm. Even like exactly. the Mayor yeah. the team will pat the other team on the back for getting a goal. Oh, we, yeah. we had to pat them on the back a lot. Yeah. Yeah. On Sunday. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Yes. And it's it's yeah. just so nice to see them, you know, um, bonding with each other, mm -hmm. um, supporting each other. Yeah. And I know they'll all they'll they'll talk about each other and they'll laugh. Um, they'll they'll they're just all really they'll close. tease each other a little yes. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all part of it. Too. Yeah. yeah, Josh, Fair you sure. were making a point at the very beginning about sportsmanship being mm -hmm. one of mm -hmm. the main qualities that you're trying to instill. And yeah. I, I was always so proud when my kids won that, whatever mm -hmm. they might have been the most outstanding players on the team, yeah. but they usually the always got the best sportsmanship. Yeah. And I said kudos because yeah, it's that's so huge. important it really to is. be a gentleman or a lady and mm -hmm. accept your loss. And in our organization, that comes organically with our athletes. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Once in a while, obviously, the competitive juices flow, they but get, it's, oh, it's, yes. very, it's very seldom that yeah. that happens. But um, you know, you you just take a corrective measure, and they oh yeah, we f and then they no, go back exactly. to doing their thing. So it, it's fantastic. Speaking of that competitive nature, one other thing that Ann's class has done is uh, I can't remember who took it on, but uh, a few of the students. Uh, we have an athlete in the community, Ashlyn Adams, who's been yes. to three World Games. I'm what? pretty sure, oh, yeah. Wow. Three World Games, yeah. I uh, believe two silver and a gold. In what sport? Or a bronze. Um, oh, snowshoeing and twice athletics. and athletics once. Uh, oh, that's world athletics. To the world Jeez. three times, yeah. That's so he's, uh, they took it on to nominate him for the, the Marishi uh, Sports Hall of Fame. And uh, oh, wow. Yeah. They have they do yeah, and he's going to be inducted actually a week right before, right before the game. Oh, so you're kidding. How beautiful oh, that's fantastic. Is that? Based on the we students' want. research. And, yeah, yeah, that is Aww. amazing. Absolutely amazing. We want to thank you all for joining us today and filling us all in on this Special Olympics. And thank you so much for all the the volunteering and the extra work that mm -hmm. you guys are putting into this to make mm -hmm. it a great, great, huge success for us here at Mary Sheen for Special Olympics across the board. Yeah. So I need You're my welcome. pom poms and cheerleading yes. shirt now. I have to work on that. That's we definitely yeah. on the Facebook page to our viewers. You can check out the schedule of events. Um, please do so and pick a few of the events that you'd like to go and out and see the games and support the athletes. Thank you again for watching us all of us here at Have a Chat. Thanks. We'll see you again next week. Have a great week. Bye. I'll be like that.